Hey, how you doing? This is Jim Grzanzio from Java Developer Relations. And this is a presentation about contributing to Java. So I'm going to cover the basics of the who, what, where, when, why, and how of contributing. And to illustrate these points, I'm going to be highlighting the Japan Java user group, or JJUG, since they have so many interesting contributors, and also since the community here in Japan is really active. JJUG's uh, pretty big in Japan, actually. They've got about 10,000 people across the country. So I figured, you know, it's, it was just time to do a profile. I've done this presentation up in Tokyo, and I did it at FOSS Asia and Vietnam, and also at COSCUP in in Taiwan recently. So I figured I'd make a video. So I'm just going to focus on the core concepts here. So, you know, the core basically, because I've studied a lot of people in a lot of fields and I've noticed over the years that the most successful people in any field, they always focus on the core. They always focus on what's the most important thing first and then they grow from there. And honestly, exceptional developers are really no different. So I've been building FOSS communities for years at Sun and Oracle, and during that time, I've also specialized in profiling developers. That's really what I love to do best. So if you know me at all, you know I love to take a lot of pictures at conferences. So for these profiles, I obviously use photos, videos, and now most recently podcasts. And I do this specifically to engage developers in conversations. It's the tool I use to learn from them. And to be honest, I, I really can't talk to people at conferences without a camera or a microphone in my hands. So it's my little crutch. So most of the images in the deck that you're going to see here and that you will always see from me are very personal. They're of specific people. And I like to tell stories about, about the people. So it makes my stuff kind of unique, I think. And the images here are obviously from Japan or they focused on the Japanese community. Oh, also the underlined text on some slides or most of the slides, those are links pointing to more information. So just ping me if you want the PDF or you can search on these concepts you know, with me, you'll, you'll find it. So in this image here, I'm interviewing Shin Tanimoto out on the street there and this is a Java event in Taiwan in 2019. I used to do a lot of interviews at Oracle events when I was traveling regularly. Uh, in 2019, I took 19 trips, so it was pretty active back then. And I used to love getting out on the street for some of these fresh air, you know, to get some fresh air for these conversations instead of being locked up inside the conference hall. Yeah, so let's see what I got here. Okay, so 450 interviews. So for the last few years, I've been interviewing developers based on working on, on multiple teams and also multiple programs at Oracle. So you can see the list here at the bottom. This is Oracle TechNet. goes back a ways. Oracle Developer Community, Oracle Groundbreakers. These are all old programs. Oracle Aces, which still exists uh, today in the database team. And now, obviously, Java Developer Relations. So at least... Recently, I've engaged developers, you know, within the Oracle communities on a variety of technologies like database, cloud, MySQL, Linux, uh, FOSS in general, hacker issues, maker issues, Java, and um, probably some more mixed in as well. <laughs> I counted recently just for kicks and I came up uh, with 450 since 2017 that I've accumulated, which isn't bad. So these are live streams uh, at events I've done and, and standalone videos and obviously most recently podcasts. Now, if you listen to these conversations, I hope you'll be inspired actually uh, about your own craft of software development and, you know, the really cool possibilities that, you know, that you have right at your fingertips. Because every interview I do, I treat it as a profile. And so... It's not about me. It's not about even the technology. It's about the person. That's how I learn, and I'm hoping that you'll learn as well. So if you click on the links at the bottom, uh, if you get the PDF, you click on the links at the bottom, you can go check out all the uh, programs. There's a rich history there. And I just figured I'd rip out some, uh, some quotes here just to give you a sense of what some of the developers say. Bert Young Scriver here. From, he's a Java champion from the Dutch jug. And he says, Java is a marvel of engineering. I mean, he had a lot of quotes in that conversation. I remember it. And he's very strong about on the engineering side of Java. 
which is really cool. So if you can be contributing to Java, contributing to any community, you, it's really cool that one of the leaders of the community is saying that this technology is a marvel of engineering. It's a, it's a great quote. Then we have Java is my superpower by Shiri Shira Pratha uh, from Pittsburgh. And she said this when she was telling me a story about she was learning Java and she realized at a certain point of how powerful it was to change her life, her career and, and making friends and colleagues and things like that. And it it's her superpower, right? And she just empowers her as an individual. And incidentally, that's how I view all of technology. It empowers you as a, as a person. Then we have Jonathan Villa in there who says, uh, everything changed. Uh, he's a Java champion in Barcelona. And he said that to me when he was telling me a story about how he was working as a developer behind the firewall for his company and he has a problem to solve and someone said, you know, you ought to ping this mailing list or this user group or something. And he says, really? I can do that? So he, he pinged the list. It was outside, outside the company. And he was surpri surprised that he got a response right away and really it was uh, an amazing situation where they said, oh, here's, you might want to try this and that and by the way, why don't you come to our user group and we can talk about it more, that kind of thing. And he was like, wow, this is it's a whole different world. It's a whole other world outside, right? So he went to the group, went to the user group meeting. And he said from that moment on, everything changed and his whole career changed and his whole mindset changed when he discovered the community. And in the final quote here, the Java community is awesome. That's from Merit Van Dyke, uh, also a Java champion. You know, she said this, but everyone says that, right? So that's the point here is we, we started the quote sequence here with the, in terms of the technology, a marvel of engineering and Java's my superpower. Again, focus on technology and then ending up with the community here. It's always a combination of all of these things. Now, look, I have thousands, well, probably hundreds of quotes like this. So I just grabbed a few here. It, you know, this is what I do. I talk to developers about their craft. I view this stuff as craft. It's not just a job to me. And I want to hear about the stories. I want to hear developers as, you know, their stories as people, how they became developers, the challenges they've overcome, things like that. And that's just what I love to do. So I base my opinions about this topic of contributing, the overall topic of contributing partially on these conversations and also all the communities I've been contributing to over the years, which I'll talk to in the next slide. So there's two chunks of information here, interviews and communities that I've contributed to. So for this slide, though, the background images are some of the many people I've interviewed at various events. Some of these are in Japan, but many of them are around the world. So let's see what's next. Okay, so communities. So not only do I base my opinions on contributing, from all the developers I've interviewed, like in the last slide. But I also base my opinions on contributing from the many experiences I've had contributing to managing, participating, hanging out with, whatever, multiple communities over the years. I always tell people to participate in multiple communities if they can, because they're all a little different. You learn different things, there are different people, there's different opportunities that you can leverage. All right. If you engage in a variety of communities. Also, remember that some communities and projects grow and thrive, and that's cool, like Java or Linux or MySQL. These have been around for a long time, right? But some don't. Some don't make it. Some die. And that's life. That You just have to accept that. I've, I've experienced that myself with you know, Open Solaris, my main project I was on years ago at Sun, didn't make it. And it literally destroyed my career. So spread yourself around a little bit, engage in multiple communities, contribute to as many as you have time for, basically. So here I list most of the communities I, I've been involved with over the years at the bottom. There's, you know, construction communities going way back when I was young in business in New York, you know, publishing communities. It's interesting, not only software. You can find communities everywhere. It's not only software, but they do function a little differently. So... Uh, so construction communities, publishing communities, Open Solaris, obviously, when I was at Sun for years. Java goes way back to Sun. I, I joined Sun in 2000, so I know a lot of Java engineers going way back. NetBeans, obviously, from Sun. Linux, Sun and Oracle. 
uh, open office Juxta. Juxta was interesting. That was a you know peer to peer protocol that Bill Joy invented at Sun, and I got a chance to meet him and hang out with him a little bit. MySQL, obviously, AIOUG is the All India Oracle User Group, massive um, user group in, in India. T2PO is the Tokyo 2.0, which is a, a group in uh, Tokyo, Tokyo Bar Camp, Tokyo Hackerspace, uh, O'Reilly, and probably some more. But those are the main ones and that I've contributed to. So I just encourage people to look around. You, you know, you might, and this is over 20 years here, okay? You, I mean, you can't do this, you know. You can't contribute to everything all the time at the same time, but anyway. So yeah, just try and spread yourself out a little bit so you can learn from multiple communities. That's the point. So in this image, the JJUG uh, Cross Community Conference in June 2024, this is lightning talks in the hallway. It's kind of cool, actually. They actually had a great venue there. That's my colleague there standing up in the front of the room, uh, Nishikawa-san, and he's from the Java team in Tokyo. And he ran our booth. We had a Java booth there at the event. And he also did a hallway lightning talk, like you see here. There were about 500 people at the conference at, the, at this event. And he's literally taking advantage of an opportunity at the conference for further exposure for the Java team. And you can do that too. That's a contribution. He didn't just staff the booth. He did something a little extra. He went out in the hallway and he did a little session there for you know 10 or 15 minutes. He's handing out shirts, you know, Java shirts. He's talking about George Saab's keynote that's coming up later. You know, he's explaining the different programs in Tokyo, and he's got about 50 people there watching. So uh, you can do that too. Think in terms of all the things you can do at a conference. So that's communities. Okay, some numbers. So in terms of contributing to the Java community. We're very lucky because there's a lot of Java out there. There's a lot of code, there's a lot of people, and there has been three decades, it's 30 years of ongoing development in Java. So 30 years next year, so in a few months. So we can just look at some of the numbers here. 10 million developers, 400, almost 400 Java champions, 100 million certified developers, 360 plus user groups. Active Java Virtual Machine, 63 billion. I mean, you get the point. There's just massive amounts of code and people. And this is really just great news, right? Because we have long-term development, consistent development from Sun on up through Oracle. The community existed from the very beginning up to now, 30 years. So you had engineering and community together. And to me, from a com community perspective, from a contributing perspective, this slide represents massive opportunities for us if we know what to do. And that's what we're going to discuss now. So in the background image, this is a conference ending party at the JJUG CCC. CCC is Cross Community Conference in 2018. There were about a thousand people there. And that event, yeah, there's about a thousand people at that event. So at the end, we all had some beer and sushi and tea and stuff like that and listened to some really funny uh, lightning talks at the end. At that particular event, they did the lightning talks at the end. Yeah, we, it was at the ending party, which was a really, really sweet thing to do. So it was a lot of fun. Okay, let's see what's next. Okay, contributing. Here's the key to leverage that opportunity I was talking about on the previous slide. We got a lot of Java out there. We got a lot of people out there. But what do we do? Well, this is what we do. We contribute. But we have to focus. We have to master the basics first. Just like, like I mentioned, I study other, study other professions. Every, exceptional people always focus. And everyone who, I always noticed, everyone has accomplished something great. They engage in active, ongoing, deliberate practice. And they focus on the core basics of their field, whatever it is, like sports, music, military, education, art, all the trades, all the crafts, everything. You know, if you're looking at exceptional people, people who create high value contributions in their field, they tend to focus, they tend to practice. And so here's an example of, you know, some big contributions. Just to start us off here, we get two Duke's Choice Award winners in 2016 and 2018 from the Japan Java User Group, uh, members of the uh, JJUG. And so the point here is when you contribute, recognition follows. 
So in the image we have here in 2018 in San Francisco at Oracle Code 1, and this is Yamamoto-san getting his Javaduke Award from George Saab at Oracle for Twitter for J. That's the insert image on the right. So now in terms of contributing, Yamamoto-san won an award for his work, right? His hard work. He had to be exceptional to do that work, and it had to be good enough to be recognized by the community. So it's a big deal. Since the community is massive, this is a massive recognition for his work and whoever worked on it with him, obviously. So that's very, very powerful. And in the background image, you can see him up front there. He's with other members and leaders from the Japan Jug, which also shows several contributors, by the way, which we'll talk about shortly. In fact, there's multiple contributors in that image. And in 2016, the Duke's Choice Award also was awarded to Kubota-san from, uh, you know, for heap stats for NTT in Japan. This is yet another award from the same jug. And, um, you know, you can look at the links under the photo there, the insert photo, to get more information on those awards. So the lesson here for me is just that contributions, they're hard to do, but they create value. And the harder they are, the more sophisticated that they are, the more valuable they are, the more recognition that will come. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about first level contributions and then more sophisticated things as well. Okay, so let's touch on these core six bits I've been talking about here, the who, what, where, when, why, and how of contributing to the Java community. All right, so number one, who. Who contributes? Well, it's, it's very easy, you. And who benefits? You. But that's just where it starts. There are actually three levels to consider here because your contribution has a positive effect on the community and also your employer. Now your employer, you know, it could be your client or your customers if you're in business for yourself or wherever you derive your income from, okay? So there's three levels you, the community, and your employer. All three levels are critical because not only do all three benefit directly, but supportive relationships are created in all directions based on the work necessary to get your contribution accepted and recognized. This is an important point here. This stuff takes work. It takes time. That's what you need to build these relationships. Also remember that other community members are contributing at the same time as you are. And companies are also paying developers, which are their employees, to work on software that they need maintained upstream. Now, this is especially important for companies because they gain goodwill from their developers being engaged in Java communities or FOSS communities. They gain critical engineering contacts and relationships within the community, Companies also gain really valuable marketing and brand awareness for their engineers contributing to upstream projects. And it all starts with you. All that, all that stuff happens. I mean, you can affect many, many people, including your employer, but it starts with you. It starts with your initiative. You're the center of it. You're the initiator. So in this image here, this is the conference ending party at the uh, Japan Java user group cross-community conference in 2019. I've gone to multiple of these events, obviously. And the balloons here are tied to speakers. So they, you know, when they walk around, they got a balloon tied to them. So they're easy to spot so people can ask them questions and engage and ask them about their session and things like that. And of course, you know, there was lots of beer and tea and sushi and sashimi and uh, everyone listened to lightning talks. This is the ending ending of this conference is really cool. There's, again, there's about a thousand people and the event, actually a few hundred would stay all the way to the end for these hilarious evening party, you know, for these hilarious evening session, you know, in terms of the lightning talks. Really cool. Okay, so that's who. What's next? What? All right, what? What do you contribute? Well, you contribute whatever is necessary. You start there. And sometimes it's what you want to contribute and sometimes whatever they they be in the community, whatever they need. So it can be a combination of both. So here's a list of commonly considered contributions for any FOSS community, and Java's no different. These are all things that 
you create and offer to the community via some contribution process. These are things like code, bug reports, tests, events, books, specifications, technical articles, all these things, right? The list should be fairly obvious, but if you're new, it might not be obvious. So code is probably the most important thing to a FOSS project, but everything is important because if you have only code, you need other things, right? You need testing, uh, you need documents, you need other things as well. So also note that you just showing up is a contribution. So this is, I talked a little bit earlier about, you know, first, first level contribution and then more sophisticated things. It is a contribution if you just show up like to a user group, let's say, and I urge you to think about it this way. Go to a conference, you know, just look at any event you go to. The organizers need you there. Ask them. They usually walk around in you know, the same color shirt. You know, they're easy to spot. Just ask them, you know. They have a lot of work to do. It's very hard to organize conferences. I've done this for 20 years, right? They have to fill the space. They have to deal with sponsorships. They have to get speakers. They have to manage those speakers. They got to manage the facilities. There's financial issues. There's all kinds of logistics, legal issues, union issues, depending on the size of the building and where you are, all kinds of things. So your showing up is a massive initial contribution. That's very easy to do. So it's the first level, but do think of it as a contribution. And don't always think you have to lead a session on stage. Some events have lightning talks like you saw earlier with Nishikawa-san out there in the hallway. Some of these conferences, these are open to anybody depending on um, you know, the situation. So you can give that a try. That's a second level contribution at a conference. Or just be active in the sessions by asking questions and offering comments and suggestions and be active in the hallways. If you do this, you'll be surprised how quickly you can make new friends and new contacts, new business relationships, engineering relationships. This is how you build your credibility. It's just basic networking. And people talk, okay? So you will get noticed, believe me. Now, regarding your contribution, this is important to realize. Your contribution is your signal, okay? I'm going to mention this multiple times here. You send it to cut through the noise. Signals cut through the noise in the community. And the communities can be, this is critical because FOSS projects can be big, they can be loud, they can be messy, they can be confusing. Your contribution is the thing that gets you noticed, so remember that most people in this world talk. That's just human nature. But relatively few actually do real work, or I should probably phrase that by saying the highest value work, I guess is a better way of saying it. This is sort of like the 80-20 rule in management, where a relatively small number of people will do the highest value work in the organization. Now, everyone's necessary in the org, or everyone's necessary in the network, the highest value stuff generally comes from a relatively small number of people. So over time, as you, you know, as you engage in the community and start contributing higher and higher value contributions, you might want to consider these resources here linked at the bottom of the slide. I got three books here, Deep Work and So Good They Can't Ignore You. Those are two books by Cal Newport and also a book called Make It Stick. Now, Make It Stick is all about the science of learning. All three of these books are just incredible resources to help people learn things to the level of real expertise, which again is rare. And if your contribution is based on real expertise, well, that's valuable, okay? So anything rare is valuable. So check them out. They're serious books by computer people and scientists, and I think you'll find them very helpful. There's many really practical examples that you can implement right away. They're very simple, but they're, some of them are anti-intuitive, and they're not taught in school, so you might not even know about them. And also, they contain, all three books contain a lot of background scientific information to substantiate some of these learning processes. And some of this stuff's been around for 100 years. But again, it's not in school, and I don't know why. So we all have to keep learning in tech, right? Everything changes so quickly. Everyone talk, every interview I do, they all say, oh, I got to keep learning. I got to learn new languages. And 
applications and AI changes everything, all this, right? So my point is, why not learn more efficiently, more deeply, so you can generate more value, okay? It's not just learning for the sake of learning. I have to learn 10 languages. Well, maybe you just learn three of them and learn them really well to the level of expertise. So this way, your contribution is, is really rare, really, really valuable. That's the point. And that's the point of those books, by the way. Okay, so then this image, um, this is an Oracle Groundbreakers event we did in Taiwan in 2019, which actually was mostly Java. And there were uh, a few JJUG members there and some international developers as well. That's Joseph Zhou from the Taiwan Jug in the Java Everywhere shirt up front and Shin Tanimoto from JJUG in the black jacket up front as well. David Buck, my friend from Oracle JPG. JPG is a Java platform group. It's the engineering organization and that uh, builds Java. He's in the back with the Open Solaris shirt. That's my old project at Sun. And Ivan too, who was a Java and MySQL engineer from Oracle. And Michael Huderman, from, uh, who's a Java champion and also a PhD on the right. So yeah, oh, and by the way, I interviewed all, all five of these guys out on the street <laughs> at that conference. I loved it, it was a lot of fun. Okay, number three is where. Where do you contribute? Well, everywhere in the community. 24 seven, all over the world, there's a Java project for you. There's a FOSS community for you. There's something, open sources, standard, that goes without saying at this point. But, you know, start with GitHub, since there are obviously many projects there. It's the largest uh, repo of FOSS projects in the world, likely. Or check out other projects. You can look for projects at the Free Software Foundation, OSI is Open Source Initiative, uh, Apache, Linux, other FOSS foundations, there's many now. Since Java is everywhere, you'll likely find a Java FOSS project that you can contribute to. And obviously check out OpenJDK and dev.java for the core Java project. And we'll, I'll talk more about them as we go. In the links at the bottom of the slide, I call out specifically the Java community process and the Java champions because Japan JUG leaders are contributors to both. And the more I researched this deck, the more contributors I found. So I'm, I'm obviously leaving people out here because the more I look, the more I see. But anyway, on the, uh, on the JCP, on the executive committee, that there's two people from, you know, from JJUG, uh, Tanimoto-san and Ishida-san, and they're both in this image. Ishida-san is the woman up front there, and to her right is Tanimoto-san, which we've seen multiple times. And we'll see again. <laughs> also, there are six Java champions listed from Japan. And I list their names here. But you can see two of them on the side. Yeah, I have two of them here. Koichi Sakata is there on the left. And Shin Tanimoto are both here. And uh, some others that are in images later. So in this, in, this, in this particular image, this is from an Oracle event at the office, at the Oracle office in Aoyama, which is in Tokyo in 2019. It's probably a groundbreakers event. We have people from Japan, the US, the EU, and China, all in this image uh, from Oracle and the community. So everyone just mixes. There we, and we had sessions on Java, cloud, and database, and the obvious things for an Oracle event. I did interviews out there in the hallway as well, just where we're standing right now in this image. And the view of Tokyo from that building is just beautiful. So that's where, what's next? Okay, when? Well, now, whenever anybody asks me, when should I do this or that? I, well, I just always now, you know, start now. It's always now. FOSS communities are always looking for new contributors and new contributions. That's why now because as soon as you start looking, it'll, it, it, I mean, it will be there. Things change. Keep in mind, these are big, you know, some of the communities are big and they, ch and they change frequently. People come and they go and there's always opportunities that crop up. This is software. Things change rapidly. That's why we're in this business. And, you know, 
there's opportunities there, especially if you're serious about your craft and genuine about contributing. So also note that the leaders and the top contributors in the community are looking for you. This is something that I, I realized almost right away, actually, because I got because I got a lot of reactions from them. And so I learned that right away. So the top leaders and the contributors, they know, they realize that high quality contributors are relatively rare. So remember, your contribution is your signal. You send it to cut through the noise. I'm going to keep saying this. It's an important concept. But contributing takes assertion on your part. And you have to initiate the process. And you have to jump in. You got to get yourself noticed. Once that happens, then people will start to help. You will attract people to your project, but the initiation has to come from you. So start now. So in this image, this is uh, some JJUG leaders in 2019. And this is the uh, Japan Cross Community Conference, which I thought, you know, several of these images are from. And oh, that's uh, Shinya Yoshida there on the right in the black shirt. He's an OpenJDK contributor. See, I did every slide, every image I have, there's a contributor. They're all over the place. Okay, what's next here? Number five, why? Well, now I'm going to spend a few minutes here because I think this is the most important issue, and I teased it up a few times a little bit earlier. As I keep saying, we contribute because it's the most powerful tool we have to cut through the noise in a community. Now, when I say community, that can be at your job as well. I mean, when you do a really good work, you know, if you write something really great at work, you do a good project or whatever it is, you get noticed. That's a contribution. Think of it in that terms. But usually in a community, it's much messier, it's less organized, and you know it's distributed, it's global, there's different languages and cultures. It can be you know, a little bit more harder, harder to navigate. So I'm going to keep saying it. Your contribution is your signal. You send it to get attention and to find other contributors. You join the community. Other contributors are looking for new contributors. You start sending your signal. They can see you, and boom, you have a new relationship. That's the way it works. Then when you engage other contributors and you get your contribution accepted, that's when cool things really start to happen. Now that process can be complex and time consuming. So just prepare yourself. But during all those interactions and all those discussions, that's when you're building the relationships in the community and increasing your status as a contributor both of which can grow as the community grows, which is another really, really important point. And if the community scales massively, which obviously, look at Java, look at Linux. Those are two obvious examples of, of massive communities that have grown massively. So if that happens, you can benefit massively as well, much more than you could do alone. And that's why it's important. You can only scale so much yourself. You really need the community growth to push you to new levels, right? You can only do so much work yourself. Everyone has limits, but the community can grow much, much more than you can. And this concept, this, this is basically the network effect, right? So check this book out here to explain a lot more of this, this really unique situation. It's called The Formula, The Universal Laws of Success. There's a link down at the bottom there by Albert Lazio Barabase. He's a computer science professor in Boston. And he talks about many, many network concepts. But for this short presentation, I'm just going to focus on one, performance versus success. So he defines performance as you know, performance is about you. It drives success, but only up to a point. You have to do enough work to get noticed and you got to be able to write the application sort of thing. You got to be able to do something. But performance is bounded, okay? You only have so much time, like I mentioned earlier. You can only do so much work. There's only so many hours in a day. There are hard limits that you can't get around. Success, however, this is the distinction. Success, however, is about us, the community. And that's unbounded. That's limitless, in other words, the community can scale massively, whereas each individual in the community has natural limits. And he goes into great detail 
talking about these uh, these concepts. And really, that's really why we contribute. That answers the question why in a very powerful way, because it's a dependency for unbounded success. So do you just want to like, you know, make a little bit more money? Do you just want to get like the next level job? Or do you really want to grow massively? That's, that's a huge delta there. Huge, huge difference. It's a different way of thinking. Just think about super athletes versus average athletes, super musicians versus just average musicians. In any field, it works the same way. Now, remember that unbounded success that hopefully results from your contribution, that not only benefits you, but it also benefits your employer and the community, okay? Because you're not alone in this system. This is a network. You're tied to these other networks. And that's what's really cool about that. So check out the book. It's a phenomenal book. He's got his own data. He does original research. He's a serious computer scientist. He's not just summarizing self-help stuff. He's doing original research. So in this image here, we're at Oracle Code 1 in San Francisco in 2018. And there are three OpenJDK contributors from Tokyo in this image which we'll talk about shortly um, in terms of OpenJDK. There's Shinya Yoshida on the left, Koichi Sakata, he's third from the left in orange, and Chihiro Ito, fourth from the left. I took this image at the time, and I didn't even know that there were OpenJDK contributors at the time, but that's a big deal. <laughs> so now I don't know how what we're to, you know, multiple contributors to OpenJDK, and to other things, you know, like at the JCP, uh, Java Champions, etc. So it's really cool. Okay, what's next? How? Uh, okay, so finally, how? Number six. We are um, getting close to the end. So great FOSS projects should have developer guides, contribution processes. I've mentioned some of this before in terms of processes. Uh, they should have lists of things they need, and they should have mentors as well, people. So... Do some searching, do, you know, start reading, ask questions on the mailing lists, try to engage people, find all the new AI tools out there to facilitate these processes. I just found a tool yesterday on Twitter, this guy was, you know, loves it and was talking specifically about how this tool is specifically to help you contribute to that particular project. Walks you through all the steps and everything, very, obviously very intuitive. AI is everywhere, use the tool. Use every software tool you can to work the process. But keep in mind, you also want to tap human beings as well. You need people. If you're serious, other contributors or the leaders in the community will see your actions. So just like an observant coach or a teacher can easily spot a player or a student who's excelling or failing, they can see it. They're trained to look for these things. And remember that leaders and communities are specifically looking for your contributions. It's the same dynamic. So as teaching, coach, community leader, they're really it's the same mindset. So you get yourself noticed by engaging in whatever process is available. And some people, you know, they sigh and talk about process. Oh, I got to do this. Got to do that. It's a bit of a pain. And they kind of shy away from it. They see it as maybe bureaucracy. But don't make that mistake. Use the process. Use it as one of your engagement mechanisms. It's critical. As I was, I've been a project manager for a long time, and one of the ways you build community is by building processes, contribution mechanisms, code review tools, arc reviews, uh, mailing lists for conversations. The entire infrastructure at GitHub is a process management tool. That is what it is. So master that, because. I mean, you're dealing with, obviously, with software and, you know, software processes, but there are other people behind that, and that's how you meet people and interact with people. And plus, the project needs some sort of process to ensure the contribution meets good quality standards, whatever standards are specified for that project. And that could be code reviews and architecture reviews, security reviews, having conversations with senior developers on list, whatever, you know, whatever it is. These are all things, all things all things that are very, very important for the functioning of the, uh, of, the, of the project and for you to become a contributor. Okay, so that's the who, what, where, when, why, and how of contributing or just, you know, my version of it mixed in with 
some contributions from the Jug uh, leaders here in Japan. I've spoken with hundreds of developers, obviously, and I ask these questions. I, how do you contribute? I, I ask, what do you contribute? I ask, how do you learn? I learned about the books I mentioned earlier from developers, from engineers. I didn't just trip over them of the bookstore. I asked engineers, how do you learn? What's the most efficient way of learning a new field, a new topic, a new application? And, you know, you know whatever, right? Well, you know, you got to read, make it stick. And so I bought the book and I read the book. That's how I learn. I ask people. So that's what I got for you in terms of the who, what, where, when, why, and how. But I got a few more bits here, which we'll get to in a second. But first, in this image here, this is from Java 1 in Las Vegas in 2022. And here are some of the leaders, obviously, from Japan and the Java user group. These guys are everywhere. So now we're in Las Vegas. Before we were in Tokyo, we were also in Taiwan. Now we're here in Las Vegas. We were also in San Francisco. These guys are everywhere. Have you, you should be able to recognize now some of these, some of these guys. They're everywhere. And that's what happens when you are a core contributor to a massive FOSS community like Java, or in this case, a, a gigantic user group like the Japan Java user group. And the more contributors I look for, like I mentioned, the more I find. So again, apologies, I'm, I'm probably leaving a lot of people out. You know, like, it's, it's, you know, like when you look at their websites and their, you know, Twitter streams and stuff like that, you see that these people... <laughs> They're really amazing. You see dozens and dozens and dozens of presentations over the years, books, technical articles, videos, podcasts, code from different projects that they've contributed to. These are, these are all exceptional, exceptional people, and they are examples of all the things that I've been talking about. Now, like, for instance, the guy on the left there is Sakuraba-san. I've known him for 20 years, and he's been a core contributor to multiple projects. Takaki Sugiyama is the guy in the blue there. Uh, he helps me tremendously he's, in terms of organizing the JJUG up in Tokyo, the you know huge conference that they run. He's the center of everything. And obviously, Shin Tanimoto there on the right, Java champion, one of the core leaders as well. So yeah, that's how you do it. Okay, let's see what's next here. I want to talk a little bit about OpenJDK um, because I've some of the some of the um, most important contributions from Japan come to OpenJDK, and these this particular slide, if you've ever seen an executive or an engineer from Oracle present, and many times you'll see this slide. These are issues fixed in JDK 22. 23 is coming soon in a few months, so, so it'll be updated. You see the big red box there? That's Oracle, obviously. That represents all the contributions from Oracle. Um, that makes sense since Oracle runs the project now after it was started by Sun years ago. And I see Amazon is a big contributor, and you can see SAP, Red Hat, Google. Uh, let's see who else. IBM, NTT Data, Fujitsu from Japan. And, and more. But those are all contributions from developers at companies. So if you work at a company that uses Java and they need stuff fixed or maintained upstream, you know, maybe you can be represented here. But here's what's cool. That's not what I'm interested in. And if you look at the green box, okay, that's what I'm interested in. That says independent. That's massive. Look at the size of that box. Do you see that? You can contribute to OpenJDK without being associated with these well-known companies. It's not just a community of companies. And the evidence here is there's individuals from the Japan Java user group who are contributing to OpenJDK project. Now, this is not necessarily easy. This is the top project. This is the canonical Java project on Earth. Okay, But it can be done, obviously, because there it is. And I've you know, looked around, and I could spot five contributors to OpenJDK from Japan. I list them here at the bottom. I've spoken about a few of them. A couple of guys I don't know, and maybe I'll meet them now that I have seen this. And I'm, I'm sure I'm missing other people as well. But still, one jug, five contributors to OpenJDK. That's extraordinary. That's really, really excellent. And so I wanted to 
really, this is the reason for doing this presentation, is to talk about contributing, to educate people on what I've learned about contributing, but to highlight specifically the people, the developers from the Japan group up in Tokyo. So there are a lot of contributions to Java from this user group, and that's an opportunity for you. If you're in Japan, then you can see these people as mentors. All right? If you're not in Japan, you can see this as a model, something that you can bring to your user group to basically emulate as, a, as like a template. So you can check these links for more information on really everything on OpenJDK. There's projects, contributing, contributors, discussions, social, all this stuff. The bottom two links, uh, they point to a video and a podcast that outline pretty much everything you need to know about OpenJDK. The top links just point to all the places you need to go. Um, and, and note the census link. This is, this is actually the best link because you click on that. If you just go to openjdk.org and look at census in the top left corner, you click on that and you see all the thousands of usernames. It just scrolls and scrolls and scrolls. You see the usernames of the contributors and their projects. And, you know, you can be there, right? Why not? You know, they're there, <laughs> so why not? Okay, finally, almost done. So get started, don't stop. That's the best advice I learned from a developer I knew in New York when I was in the construction business. I had my own business for years in New York. And when I was young, I used to seek out interesting developers. You seeing a pattern here? I still, I'm still doing it now. And I found this developer who was very wealthy and very smart, and he built great buildings. And I, I asked him how he did it. And he looked at me. And he said, get started, don't stop. And at the time, you know, I thought the advice was a bit flip because he was a flip guy. But over the years, it can be that easy. And you think about it, most people never start because most people are busy talking. And then if they do actually start something, they generally quit. They stop. So get started, don't stop can actually be, it can actually get you a long way. So remember that high-value contributors are relatively few in number. They're rare, and that's why they're valuable, because those are the people that they got started, and they didn't stop. They kept going. Yes, they failed. Sure, failure is a part of it, but they kept on going. So offering serious contributions of real value is not easy, though. So I'm not, I'm not saying this, any of this is easy. Showing up is the first step as I've mentioned before, but things can get more complex and more valuable as value increases. But, you know, you can do it. The Java community here in Japan is seriously intelligent, and they're very advanced, and everyone knows that. So why not you as well, wherever you are? So I got a lot of links here. I want to review these links at the bottom of the slide. I collected 14 places to get started and start contributing, and hopefully you won't stop, right? So... Moving from left to right, I'm going to go over these links. Moved by Java is the first one. This is a video. It's a great video. It's like it's like five minutes long. You really got to watch this video. This is the um, 25th anniversary of Java. It's basically ce celebrating 25 years of Java from many community leaders. This is a must watch to understand why people love Java so much. That's Java the technology and Java the community. Both are articulated. The video is produced by uh, the team that I work for, the Java Developer Relations team at Oracle. And oh, also, pretty much everything in that video is reflected in all of my podcasts at Duke's Corner, which is also a great resource for you. The stories are the same. All right, it's just that video is a, it's a bit sexier. You know, it's just you know it's a little you know it's video, and I just do audio now. So the next three links, Inside Java, Dev.Java, and Java YouTube. Inside Java and Dev Java are websites run by the Java DevRel team. Inside Java aggregates content from engineers from the Java Platform Group at Oracle. And this is cool because that's the core people who are building the core platform. And you, can, you have access to everything they say on one place. It's really, really cool. And Dev.Java focuses on content for the community and uh, also contains um, community contributions. 
So let's see what else. The YouTube channel is run by, obviously run by the DevRel team. It also contains content from multiple team members. You know, news, you know, technical news, obviously, about Java releases, Jet reviews, short video tips, technical podcasts with JPG engineers. And actually, that podcast is called Inside Java Podcast. It reflects the same feel as that's inside .java website. It focuses on the engineers that are building the core platform. And so there's also conference sessions on the YouTube channel, keynotes, these kinds of things from Oracle events and also community events. Uh, contribute to dev.java is the next link. As I mentioned, the website, we take contributions from the community. And they got about 10 or so, as, as I looked last, contributions. You know, it's a brand new program. Uh, these are all technical contributions of technical content like tutorials and things like that. The next link is Learn Java. These are tutorials and other resources to learn Java. The list is endless. It just scrolls, okay? So you can, <laughs> you can, you can learn everything you need to know on this one website. The next link is Java Visual Studio Code Extension. And this is a cool tool, uh, relatively new, about, about a year, uh, just under a year. So if you use Microsoft Tools, this is a popular Java language extension to enable you to write Java code in Visual Studio Code. This, actually the work was done by the Oracle JPG engineering organization in India, and it came from work from NetBeans. Basically the Java compiler from NetBeans was turned into a Java language support pack for Visual Studio Code. So, you know, honestly you have first rate Java support now in Microsoft Visual Studio Code and this is the OpenJDK at Java C compiler for code editing. And it's actually approaching just about a million downloads now, uh, as we're here in August of 24. And by the way, that Java Duke there in the image is on the left there is for Visual Studio Code extension. Okay, Java Playground. This is a, a simple web app. Again, it's built by our team, the Java Developer Relations team. And it's at dev.java, and it helps you explore the latest Java language features. It's free. You don't have to download a big IDE. It's very simple. You know, if you, if you, if you want to play, play, obviously play. Play with the latest features. See what else. Contribute to, to OpenJDK is the next link. Everything you need. I've spoken at length about OpenJDK a little bit earlier. But here it is again, um, everything you know to engage the community, projects, lists, everything. This is actually, the link here is actually a podcast with the core OpenJDK developers at Oracle. It's really a good place to start because there's multiple links in there to take you to all the most important places you need to be. Next, OpenJDK Quality Outreach Program. This is testing. This, uh, this is critically important, a huge contribution. The OpenJDK project encourages FOSS developers to test their apps on early access JDK builds, which is, this is, which is critical. I mean, that's a huge contribution to find issues uh, and get more testing suites working in OpenJDK. Next link is the state of OpenJDK and a decade of OpenJDK. These are two videos from my colleague, Dolly Bore Topic, all about the history of OpenJDK. Uh, the next two Java user groups and Java champions we spoke. I spoke a little about earlier. Uh, there's, there's hundreds of Java user groups, so plenty of places for you to network and get to know people and attend meetings. Java champions. There's hundreds of these these people um, all over the world who are evangelizing Java and building communities and things like that. And at those links, you can get more information. So that's 14 links there. Hopefully that's helpful to get started and don't stop, right? So in this image here, this is uh, from JJUG, the cross-community conference in November of 23. And that's Ayana Yokota on the escalator there. She, she was one of the speakers at the community keynote at Java One in San Francisco in 2017. So another Tokyo developer in Java shows up at Java One in San Francisco. See, they're all over the place, okay? She's obviously an important member of the community to be able to do that. So JJUG members are everywhere. Okay, this is just a reminder that Java 125 is coming soon, March 17th through 20th in California. It's back in the Bay Area. 
and the call for papers is out now. So this is a reminder to attend, reminder to submit. Java will be 30 next year, so the event will be really important. And to you know, my my Java one is the best conference for Java and the only event in the world where you have all the core Java engineers from Oracle. They're present in the same space to mix with the core developers from the community on all things community and all things technology. It's a tech heavy conference. Very, 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 very elite. Very, very good. So I've been to many. So don't miss it live. And, but if you, know, if you can't make it, hopefully some of the content will be released on the at Java YouTube channel as well. So just go to java.com. I'm sorry, java1.com for all the details. Okay, so in this image, that's Sharath Chander from Oracle, Java Developer Relations. I work for him on the team. He's really great. He's been involved with the Java community for decades now. And if you know Sharath, he knows everybody pretty much by name in the entire community all over the world. It's just amazing, his, his network and the things he does for the community. And in that image, he's at Java 122 in Las Vegas, so I thought it was apt to, to end here on this as a reminder to go to Java 1 in 2025. That's it. I'm done. Thank you very much. I really loved having this conversation with you, and I hope this was helpful. I've learned a lot from everyone I've spoken to over the years, so I just thought I'd share a little bit. You could follow me on Twitter at Jim Grizz, and check out uh, also the Duke's Corner podcast, which is where I spend most of my time these days for discussions that are exactly like this. This is the exact conversation I have, you know, on the podcast. I talk about contributing and learning and career and, and things like this. So in this image, this is the most recent Japan Java User Group conference up in Tokyo in June. And there are about 500 people there. I did a session. Actually, I did this particular session there at that event. We ran a booth, like I mentioned earlier, gave out hundreds of, of Java t-shirts. In fact, the last two conferences, we've given out a total of, I think, about 400 Java shirts, you know, Java t-shirts. So it's great fun. Anyway, if you want the slides, send me a DM on Twitter and uh, hope all is well. Cheers.